Hello and welcome back, whiskey fans. December the 13th today, unlucky for some. Hopefully, we're going to get a fantastic dram out of our premium whiskey advent calendar. What would be a good themed whiskey for the 13th dram? No idea, actually. <laughs> oh, I've ripped that one again. Odd big wee beastie. That's a little bit spooky, isn't it? Although that doesn't really belong in the premium whiskey advent calendar. Odd big Arinam based. That's a very expensive, spooky themed whiskey. Probably too expensive for this advent calendar though. Right, here we go. Clean glass. Label away. Break the seal. And away we go. Out of sight. So this is another reasonably dark one. And potentially a reasonably old one. Definitely has more character than yesterday's House of Hazelwood 18 year old. But it's got quite a lot of old malt and quite a bit of old sherry. And it's um, it's not sort of a Glenrothes light and fruity playful Glenlivet style sherry. It's more of a salty, meaty, savoury, slightly mushroomy, that kind of sherry. Leather armchair, old malt, walnuts, nutty. It smells quite nice. Very traditional style of sherried whiskey. I think I'm guilty, like a lot of people, in saying that when you smell a sort of dry sherried whiskey, that style of whiskey, you sort of identify it as being old fashioned. And a lot of us imagine that that's the sort of whiskey that people drank like, sort of 50, 70 years ago. Whether or not it is, <laughs> not many of us have tried a vast cross section of whiskey from back then, so it's hard to say, but it's the kind of thing that a lot of us identify as traditional sherried scotch. Slightly inky as well, in a good way. Let's see how it tastes. So a very characterful whiskey today. Again, I think it's Scotch. Probably Highland. Definitely not Isla. It's a very odd one. <clears throat> it's got, it's definitely old. I'm going to guess 18 to 20 years old again. And there's lots of old malt notes, lots of oiliness, walnut oil, macadamias, that sort of greasy note that you get from macadamia nuts in particular. Slight sort of salty meatiness on the nose. So I don't think it is, but kind of the, the flavours that you get from things places like Mortluck. I must admit that I find this one refreshingly honest, especially compared to some of the whiskies that I've had lately, like the, the Singleton of Dufftown and the, the House of Hazelwood. This seems like a very, not necessarily, might not be craft presentation, but it's an honest style of whiskey. Interestingly, on the palate, lots of character in this whiskey. I hope this one is uh, an affordable single malt because it's definitely one that I would consider buying if for no other reason than it's refreshingly different. 
there is quite a grassiness on the palette, uh, on the late palette, and that grassiness is possibly something that's coming from some slightly drier, grassier and spicier than average bourbon casks, perhaps. Some, maybe something like a wild turkey bourbon cask. Also getting quite an, a flavour of tea on the late palette. And that tea note, I think, is probably some tannins coming from the age of this whiskey. Now, some whiskies develop it, some whiskies don't. Some very old whiskies develop too much of it, and it completely ruins the whiskey. But I think in this whiskey, that slightly stewed tea note towards the late palette is something that really adds a little bit of character. I'm just struggling with the ABV on this one. I'm, not that it's too high, I'm struggling to pin down what it is. And it's really down to a choice of, is it 43 or 46? Straight away, it didn't seem overly strong. But the more I nose it, the flavours are coming out. I think it's just that everything about this whiskey is that little bit understated. And being English, being British, we like that sort of thing here. Understated and humble and subtle. Beats big, brash and in your face any day, doesn't it? Well, most of the time. Going back to what I said earlier though, this definitely seems like an honest, well-made, just decent, honest whiskey. Mm. If you just take a long, slow drag of the aromas on the nose of this whiskey, you really get lots of well-aged notes. It's a little bit of a roller coaster of all the different aromas in there. I'm tempted to say this probably is 46%, but it's on the lighter side of 46% whiskies. But that sweet stew tea, nuttiness, oiliness, sweet malt, those sweet oily malty honeyed malt notes that you only get from an 18 plus whiskey. Not getting, not getting peat as such on this one. I think that there's some smokiness, but I think that's probably coming through from a combination of the malt and the cask. Although possibly a very, very, very light peatiness on this one. It's hard to tell. A lot of very old whiskies, they can trick you. They can develop some smokiness without actually being peated once they get to a sufficient age. And I think this whiskey is in that territory. I would guess 18 to 20 years old. I think it took me a little bit of time to for this one to grow on me, but I think it's a very good whiskey. Just based on the length of the finish, I think I'm going to go with 46. <laughs> I keep flip-flopping several times between 43 and 46, but I think it probably is at least a semi-craft presentation. I'm going to say it's definitely Scotch, probably Highland, 18 to 20 years old. And if it's not too expensive, I'll definitely buy that one. As for the leaderboard, I think this one's going to be towards the top end. It's, I would say it's better than the Glen Rothes 18-year-old Saleo. It's probably going to be up there fighting it out with the, um, the Tamdu 15-year-old. It's going to be in that territory. Let's see what we've got. Loch Lomond 18-year-old single malt scotch whiskey. Always important with Loch Lomond to see what it actually is because they produce some single malt and some single grains but this one here is a single malt whiskey and it's 18 years old and it is 46 percent abv so lovely little logo on that lovely traditional cliched maybe slightly but the logo for loch lomond if you can 
see that one if it'll focus. Little stag with its antlers. I think that's a crown above its head. Very traditional and honest, straightforward distillery, Loch Lomond. And I think that they are really a distillery that flies under a lot of people's radars. I definitely would not have guessed Loch Lomond because it's just not a distillery that a lot of people think about, at least not me personally. But that's almost a shame. I think possibly because they present quite a lot of different styles of whiskey, so a lot of people have trouble being a dedicated fan. But also because they, through no fault of their own, they don't really stand out in terms of branding and marketing above other distilleries. But especially, and, and it is a Highland Scotch whiskey as well, which I think I said, which I guessed. But I think that some of the recent bottlings, especially from Loch Lomond, like their peated single grain whiskey made from 100% malted barley, they've really punched at a much higher weight than they have any business doing so, because that was a, a really good value bottling, that peated single uh, grain. And I expect this is probably fairly good value for an 18 year old as well. Just give me a second to look that up. Okay, reasonable. <laughs> uh, 80 pounds for a 70 uh, centiliter bottle of the Loch Lomond 18 year old. Don't know if there's any other pertinent uh, information there. Highland region, 18 years in oak, duh. <laughs> this expression has developed a complex flavour profile, red berries, mature oak, vegetal peat. So there is a little bit of peat in there. I think I picked up on the vegetal, but not necessarily that it was overtly peated. Runny honey, apparently. <laughs> and it actually says there, Loch Lomond are renowned for being able to produce a variety of styles at their distillery, including malts, grains and blends. Top stuff. So yeah, that was a good one. Definitely wouldn't mind some other craft presentation. Good, honest, single malt scotch whiskey in the advent calendar going forward. So, yeah, that one's going to be towards the top of the leaderboard. And I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. See you tomorrow. Slanjava.